Yo, Kippy Sky here, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel, and today we're gonna to talk about speaker impedance. Talk about what speaker impedance is, ohms, what it means to you, and why it's something that's it's very important that you pay attention to when you're buying speakers and amplifiers or receivers. So before we can talk about what it means and all, we gotta talk about where do you find it? What, what, am I, what am I talking about when I say impedance or ohms? On the back of every single speaker that you will ever see, there's usually a label that says it's impedance, it's ohm rating. You can go on the website of your manufacturer and in its specs, it'll also have sensitivity, ohms, impedance, all that stuff kind of down below in some kind of chart. Now, what this is telling you is how much energy, how much electricity, how much power this particular speaker is going to draw from your amplifiers, right? So typically the lower the number, the more power hungry that speaker will be. So in home theater, we have speakers around eight ohms. That's the norm, that's common. That's the easiest speaker to drive in a home theater world. Then we have six ohms, not as popular, but there are six ohm speakers out there. They're a little harder to drive than eight, but typically you'll be fine. Four ohms is where it gets tricky for home theater. Not a lot of receivers can get down to four ohms. Some do if you spend enough money, um, but four ohms is more taxing on your receiver. That particular speaker is gonna ask for a lot of energy more times than not from your particular amplifier or receiver. Now in the car audio world, we're digging down to two ohms and to one ohms, and some people even go down to half ohm. So the lower the number, the more uh, force that speaker's gonna ask from that amplifier. So you may be wondering, hey, KPS guy, so what if I have a eight ohm speaker that's rated to 100 watts and I have a four ohm speaker that's rated at 100 watts? Are they the same? Can I play my 100 watt four ohm speaker on an eight ohm amplifier? No, you can't do that. Even though they are the same wattage rating, 100 watts, this one is still four ohms. It's asking for 100 watts at four ohms, not 100 watts at eight ohms. So what's gonna happen if you plug that four ohm speaker to that eight ohm amplifier, you're not gonna get 100 watts. You're gonna get less than that because the ohm rating is higher um, on the amplifier than what the speaker is asking for. So the speaker says, no, I need 100 watts at four ohms right now, and, this, and the amplifier's like, no, nah, I'm not giving you 100 watts at four ohms, I'm gonna give it to you at eight, and you're gonna like it. The speaker's like, no, I can only use half of that, <laughs> because half of eight is four, then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, right? So you can't just plug in a four ohm speaker that's rated at 100 watts to an eight ohm amplifier that's rated at 100 watts because you're not gonna get 100 watts. It's still going to, your amplifier will be completely fine, most likely, but your speaker will be being underpowered in that case, and you're probably gonna cause harm to your to your speaker. You may still cause harm to your amplifier because it wants to, it's reading a four ohm load and it can't produce that. So it's, it's a little bit tricky. So we kind of have an idea of what ohms are now. So like I said, on the back of your speaker right now in your home, even in headphones, headphones, 32 ohms, 16 ohms, everything has an ohm rating and all it says is, hey, I'm gonna ask this much power from you at a given time. And the lower the number, the more they're going to demand out of your receiver. So it's incredibly important to make sure that when you're out there buying speakers and amplifiers or speakers and receivers, that you match those ohms or impedance ratings together. So if you have four ohm speakers in your cart that you're planning on buying, well, make sure that your amplifier or your receiver can handle four ohms. Because if it can't, you are going to cook your amps. I promise you, it may not happen immediately, but if you get high enough in volume for a long enough amount of time, you will overwork, overload those amplifiers and you will be toast. Your amp will be toast and you're gonna be out of amps and you're gonna be back in the market forking out some more money to replace it or you're gonna be trying to use your warranty which it probably doesn't cover. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you match your ohms rating. Now you may be wondering, okay, I understand what ohms are, I understand what impedance is, but does one sound better than the other? If I can get a four ohm speaker, wouldn't I wanna get that because it's more powerful than an eight ohm speaker? That's not how it works at all. Like I said, you can have an eight ohm speaker powered at 100 watts, and you can have a four ohm speaker that also is 100 watts. It's not about power, it's about what ohm rating do they need to reach that perceived power right so it's not about what sounds better it's about how much electricity it's going to draw at a given time um, depending on its impedance so don't worry about one sounding better than the other i 100 percent promise you if i had a speaker that's eight ohms and a speaker that's four ohms and a speaker that's six ohms 
you're not gonna be able to tell me which one is what. They're gonna sound the same to you as long as the amplifier that you're using is matched with the impedance. If you put a four ohm speaker to an eight ohm speaker, you may hear distortion. You may have a, a little bit of a longevity issue because you're frying your amps over time, but you're not gonna be able to individually tell me, hey, this speaker's four ohms, this speaker's six, this speaker's eight, just by listening to it. It won't happen. Now, it's also important to match your ohms because you can actually um, lower the amount of power given to your speaker. So let's say you have a four ohm amplifier, but you have an eight ohm speaker. Can you power your eight ohm speaker with a four ohm amplifier? Yes, you can, because the impedance is higher than the lowest rated. So amplifiers that are rated down to four ohms does not mean you can only pair it with another four ohm speaker. You can pair it with four, six, eight, and onwards, but you don't necessarily want to do that. And the reason being is that if you're higher in ohms than your receiver or your amplifier, then you're not going to get its max power. Here's my example. I have a Monoprice Monolith 7X rated at 200 watts um, times seven at eight ohms. So I can power seven individual speakers with 200 watts if they are rated eight ohms, but it's also rated down to four ohms as well. And I think I can get somewhere in, in like the 600 power rating, something like that. So my, my amplifier is able to give me different power amounts at different ohms. So if I have an eight ohm speaker plugged up to it, the most I'm gonna get out of the amplifier is eight ohm, or excuse me, is 200 watts. If I have a six ohm speaker, I'm gonna get a little bit more. If I have a four ohm speaker, then I'm gonna get all its power. So my amplifier is rated at 200 watts per channel, but if I plug in a four ohms, now it's 600 watts per channel or 500, whatever the rating is. So you don't wanna plug a higher rated speaker into a lower rated amplifier necessarily. Now, this could be confusing, so I'll try not to confuse too many people. If I have a four ohm amplifier rated at 400 watts and I have an eight ohm speaker rated at 100 watts and I plug them together, that's probably gonna be fine because this amplifier has so much headroom that it's probably going to still be able to give me the power that I want to power the eight ohm speaker. But if I have a four ohm amplifier rated at 400 watts and I have an eight ohm speaker rated at 500 watts, well, we don't wanna do that because I'm never gonna have the amount of power that I need to get all the juice to my eight ohm speaker because it's only rated at best 400 watts at four ohms, meaning my eight ohms is going to be a little less power because it's a higher impedance. So it's a really, it's not a hard concept to grasp, but if you're not exposed to this very often, it can be confusing. But to keep it simple or to go back to simpler times, <laughs> you just wanna match your speakers with the amplifier and make sure that the impedance or ohms are relatively the same. You don't wanna power an eight ohm speaker on a four ohm amplifier unless it's not asking for a lot of power. And you definitely don't wanna do vice versa. You don't wanna power um, a four ohm speaker on an eight ohm amplifier because you're going to harm that amplifier. Or you may send too much power to your speaker, whichever comes first. It's a risk either way. So impedance slash ohms is a complicated and it gets worse. It's a lot of math to it, um, but it's not necessary to understand. Um, but it can get really complicated. So I'm sorry if I confuse anybody, but the comment section is the best place for me to go back and kind of give you a more dedicated answer. So if you have a particular question about ohms or impedance, get down there in the comment section. I see it all. I'll answer direct questions for you guys because I'm into car audio a lot where ohms and impedance actually matters a lot more than it typically does in home theater. So I have a pretty good idea of what's going on. So if you have a dedicated, a dedicated question, let me know down below in the comment section and I'll get right to you. Um, otherwise, just match your speakers with your amplifiers. Make sure you're paying attention to ohms ratings, your impedance ratings, because if you're not and you don't know it, you're in trouble. Right now, before you click off this video, go to your speakers and look on the back, look at the sticker. What does it say? How many ohms? Six, four, eight, what does it say? Then go to your receiver or amplifier and look on it. What is it rated to? If you have an ohm issue, if your ohms are off in a negative way, I need you to, I need you to fix that. I need you to go out there and find an amplifier that's better uh, suited for your amplifier or for your speakers um, because you're gonna have problems in the future. If you haven't happened now, it will. You may say, oh, okay, but Sky had my for 10 years. It doesn't matter. You may not hear any problems, but internally there's some issues going on, I promise you. So take a look at that. Hit that like button, get down there in the comment section, leave me some questions, and I will see you guys in the next video.
Keep this guy out. Peace. Say I lost my mind. I will keep on holding my head high. Even if the sky is falling down.